Hello folks, good afternoon and welcome to Solitude, home of the Northern Ireland Premiership side Cliftonville. Today it plays host to the European Women's Under-17 Championships. Uh, it's a round one to qualifier between Northern Ireland and Austria. Joel Neal here alongside Northern Ireland international midfielder Cara Hamilton. Uh, Cara, we're back again. Uh, stern test for Northern Ireland here today against uh, a very good Austria side. Absolutely. I mean, it's Ligue A at the end of the day. You're you're fighting against the, the best sides in Europe. Um, and Austria are a team that I will have known well over the past year, having played them quite a few times. And um, I'd imagine that kind of that DNA of a really high energy fit um, athletic kind of team is is going to come through in this under 17 side as well and you know Northern Ireland first of all have got to match their their work rate um, to begin with before they even think about what they're going to do on the ball but I have no doubt that, that Noel Mitchell have prepared the girls well and you know they'll have regrouped well after the, the Finland game the other night they'll take a lot of positives from that and a lot of encouragement for how they held out for long periods of that game and, and had chances themselves so yeah I think uh, excited for this one to, to see what they'll, they'll bring to this game. You said it there, Northern Ireland looking two points back following their opening game, a uh, 2-0 defeat against Finland uh, and this afternoon at Solitude, their second test and uh, as, as you made your way up into the main stand here to our commentary position, you said that the Republic of Ireland got a got the result this afternoon against Finland. Yeah, I was just chatting to their uh, coach there, they were 3-1 up and um, the game, as you said, finished 3-2, so the, <laughs> the group's wide open. Uh, Austria will probably know that result now as well and they've got to come out fighting because they can go top of the group here with a with a win. Um Finland and Republic of Ireland have, have won have won a game each now. So it's gonna be a big motivator for Austria and I to see what they can do in this game and then for Northern Ireland, if they can take something from this game then then they're still in it as well. So it's an exciting group and uh yeah, I'm looking forward to see how this one plays out. It certainly is that. Northern Ireland's next test after today is on Thursday afternoon and that is the big game against the Republic of Ireland. So uh, a win this afternoon or a result here, uh, even a point would set them up for, for a big tilt on Thursday. Um, you saw your teams on the screen there as we prepare for kickoff. We'll just run through those as we get things underway. Um, starting with Austria in goal number one, Lara Ritter, number four, Sarah Gutman, number seven, Hannah Fankhauser, number eight, Greta Spin, number nine, Yasmin Reiterer, number 10, Lara Hushar, number 14, Teresa D'Angelo, 15, the captain, Florentina Sadra, 16, Leonie Tragel, 17, Almedina Sisic, and 18, Valentina Illinger. And uh, Northern Ireland in goal number one, Ellie Scott, number two, Orlea McGuinness, three, Sophie Keenan, four, Abby Sweetlove, five, Neve O'Donnell, number six, Darcy McNeil, seven, Rachel McIntyre, eight, Mia Moore, number 10, the captain, Amy Kerr, 17, Rihanna Breen, and 18, Gracie Conway. As things are up and running here, Northern Ireland in that uh, new home shirt. That's the first time I've seen it in person, it looks really good. Early throw for the green and whites here on our near touchline from the camera position and uh, you can't quite see it but there are a good number of supporters here just under the main stand and uh, a small band of very loyal travelling Austria supporters here <laughs> just behind the goal mouth there's a throw from D'Angelo yeah you were just saying about the crowd there the um, crowd out at CV the other night was really strong as well and it's great to see young girls coming out to watch the under 17s it's um all kind of coming off the back of the summer as we said and things like this really just carry the momentum forward if we can get behind all the teams not just the senior women's side obviously and small little things like this like having a live stream just making it more accessible is huge for the game can agree more it's a conversation we've had before but frankly it's one i'll, I'll not get bored of you know the, the momentum in uh, in both international and domestic women's football at every level um, is something that, that I feel anyway is, is long overdue um, really really welcome great to see and uh, and that kind of growing coverage and you are right it's you know certainly um, Northern Ireland Women's Year and, and the summer um, has, has played a big big part in that but finally um, a, a great product is getting the eyeballs it deserves we have another throw here on our near touch line as both teams feel each other out work their way into this game Sophie Keenan plays that back in Austria finding the lion's share of possession early on here, but are being turned away well by that Northern Ireland defence. Here's Reiterer. She's worked off the ball by Breen. Austria back in possession. Good pass in football. Northern Ireland doing really well to get bodies around the ball. Yeah, they are being swarmed here in the early going as Austria 
content to press high, see what they can do, force a few decisions and, uh, and get some possession. And it is working as the ball has spent quite a lot of time in Northern Ireland's half. Here's a ball across from D'Angelo. But uh, Carr, you're right, there's uh, astute defending so far to turn each of those waves away. Yeah, a little bit of a frantic opening three minutes here. It's kind of similar, actually, to the Republic of Ireland game. I watched um, as much as I could of the Republic of Ireland's game against Austria, and it was just all high energy, go, 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 right from the very start. Both teams showing their intent. And um, Northern Ireland, like I said, have to just match the work rate of Austria first and foremost before they think about what they do in possession. Um, but I think it shows a lot of respect to the Northern Ireland team that Austria haven't made any changes coming into this game, so clearly showing their intent that... You know, they want to go out and make a statement in this game and get the win. It's certainly a side to be taken seriously as they host this round of qualifiers. There's a run down the right-hand side from McGuinness. The play spreads out to that right-hand side really for the first time since kickoff. And uh, possession lost on the edge of the box. D'Angelo makes her way back into the middle here. And once again, Northern Ireland has to be said back well and dealt with that very well as Ellie Scott clears. at both sides competitive form over their last five games Northern Ireland with three wins two losses and the Austrians with three wins a loss and a draw doesn't tell the full story but certainly both sides who know what it takes to be successful here's Goodman yeah the Austrians most recent loss their only loss was to to Germany no less <laughs> and they were actually 2-0 up in that game so certainly shows the, the quality that they have in this side and they are moving the ball well here trying to just probe their way into that 18 yard box as a ball is sent out wide and just beyond Teresa D'Angelo just proud of that though I thought it was a really good passage of play from Northern Ireland but they couldn't get forward they were just happy enough to go back and they weren't going to force the play and I think that's something that um, is going to be really crucial in this match and something that maybe they didn't do so well the other night against Finland at times they were just too eager maybe to get forward and at times it's okay to just go back and keep it you don't have to be going forward every single time well, Finland match Northern Ireland were no nil at the break and uh Two goals in quick succession from Cerelius in the 50th and 52nd minute. Separated the sides. Ball out into the midfield to the feet of McIntyre. She's been under pressure by Sisic. It's going to be an Austria throw. Looking at the, the senior women's setup, uh, Cara, and once again, nobody better to ask, but um, one match left for the year um, against Italy, I believe, um, mm -hmm. unless my notes are wrong. Um, but that, that will close off what has been you know, a, a remarkable year. It's been one that's kind of had its difficulties for you personally. Yep. Um, you had a memorable summer, maybe not in the way that you had imagined, but um, just a, a real statement year for, for that Northern Ireland women's setup and, and something to build on um, as, as we head in towards 2023. Yeah, and the perfect way to close it out with a home game. You know, yep. we haven't had a, a match at home uh, since the England game, I believe, in, in April. You know, we didn't get a, a game at home before the Euros, so we didn't quite get that send-off. Uh, and then haven't played in front of a home crowd since. So it's going to be really interesting now to see what kind of crowd comes out in November. I'd imagine it'll be a, a big one, hopefully a sell-out at Seaview. And, yeah, one that we're really looking forward to against, <laughs> again, another top, top opposition in Italy. Yep, that is a, a big tie. And, uh couldn't encourage you enough um, if you have been to games before or if you haven't to, to get the coat on get the big coat on it's that time of year again as a bit of a fumble here in goal and uh, Neve O'Donnell just about makes up for that goalkeeper Ellie Scott was caught off her line there yeah I don't know whether that was just a lack of communication between the two um, possibly Ellie Scott didn't make it quite clear that she was coming out to, to, to get that but in Neve O'Donnell's case it's better just to be safe Free halts play here. And Northern Ireland have a minute to pause and regroup.
Scott has plenty of short options. Plays a, a fairly risky ball through the middle. Let's see the feet of Darcy McNeil. But Northern Ireland, as we saw in the, the last game, I had the privilege of covering here, the friendly against Belgium. Uh, very content to play out from the back and, and assess their options. Still just suffering a little bit from the high press of Austria through this first 10 minutes. As the visitors look to spread the play. Teresa D'Angelo screaming for that on the right wing. The ball was with spin in the midfield, back out left. Well taken care of by Rachel McIntyre. What's the key to this in your opinion, Car? Obviously, you've got Austria really pressing here. They're trying to, to force those errors and, and, uh, and, and keep Northern Ireland under pressure whenever they're on the ball. Is it a case of kind of weathering the storm and, and taking your options, finding an opportunity on the break? How do, how do you turn over sort of a, a threatening start like that? Well, with them playing in such a, a high press and stepping up very high, then the the way to beat that press is probably to go over it. Um, but they've probably got to find a way to work around the press, first of all. Um, so the midfielders are going to have to be brave and get on the ball from the back. Um, the back centre backs as well are probably going to have to be comfortable on the ball too. Try and work a few passes short, a few short, suck them in and then try and play long and behind them. That will be the way to beat it. But again, it comes down to are you willing to get on the ball? Are you brave enough to take it on the back foot with your back to goal, so close to your goal? Um, so for the midfield, that's that's the real challenge. Darcy McNeil certainly looks like she's confident enough to step in and, and take the ball. But it's whether they can then get the likes of Maya Moore and Amy Kerr on it as well and then release the wingers because we know the pace that Rachel McIntyre has that Rihanna Breen showed really, really good signs the other night whenever she came on, confidence going forward. So it could be a quiet day for them, but They've got to make sure that they take hold of the ball and take the chances whenever they come. Ellie Scott and uh, the Northern Ireland defenders do very well to uh, to cut off that phase of play from Austria. Good ball in from the left-hand side that dropped into danger. Uh, Scott came out and ended up with the ball in her hands. But still... Again, just the sheer numbers that Austria pressed with. There was three around Brianna Brayton there yeah, looking yeah. to win the ball back. So if Northern Ireland can make their decisions quicker, I mean, if they're pulling three players across to her, then obviously there's spaces elsewhere, and it's just whether they can look up early enough and find those spaces to then exploit them, if they are committing so many bodies towards the ball. And uh, whenever the ball is deep there, the work rate from, from Captain Amy Kerr and from Gracie Conway to, to try and give a little back. The signs are there for Northern Ireland, if they can continue to weather the storm here and begin to put their mark on the game. And there's a good three ball intended for Rihanna Breen that just got a little bit of a clip on it from Satra and in the 11th minute this really feels like the first pause of that <laughs> frantic <laughs> opening kind of phase from Austria Sadra looks up and sees space on that right hand side knocked on by D'Angelo and it's a foot race now as Ryder chases the ball into the box and brave goalkeeping from Ellie Scott to come out and collect yeah maybe just a slight hesitation there but made up for it coming out to gather it short ball roll to McNeil and Northern Ireland will now try and play out themselves here's Keenan it's good feed from Sophie Keenan there Good ball down the line too, to the feet of Rihanna Breen, who looks for a ball, can't quite get that lofted. And it ends up with Ritter, the goalkeeper. You can see there, just maybe not quite comfortable on that left foot crossing the ball, but just maybe not going to get too many opportunities to cut inside onto the right. So she's going to need some support possibly from Sophie Keenan or from another midfielder to maybe change the angle of the cross. That ball just a bit too far for Fankhauser. Yeah, Orlea McGuinness got kind of sucked in really, really deep there. And then they knew exactly what they wanted to do, that that runner was the decoy and then to try and play in behind. So she's just got to be careful that she's not um, pulling in too deep there and letting them exploit the space in behind her. 
O'Donnell. Searches for something forward. Bounces out of play again. As we wait, play to get underway again here. Qualifying format that we're currently in, uh, this is, uh, as Cara says, is a, a League A Group 3 game. League A includes 28 teams, um, including the seven promoted from League B after round two of the 21-22 edition uh, back in spring. They compete in seven groups and uh, from these single venue mini tournaments, the teams finish from fourth. We relegated to League B for 22-23 round two, with the other positions deciding seating for League A in that round. Um, Estonia, as the hosts of the Euros, will take part in both rounds, although their finals place is assured. <laughs> Keenan with the short throw to Conway. Played into the middle and uh, to the feet of McNeil. This is better for Northern Ireland. Ball forward from Amy Kerr. Just not quite on the same wavelength there. Rachel McIntyre pulling out a bit wider, but Kerr wanted to make wanted her to make that into out run in between the centre half and the full back. Here's a good ball from Austria. Trago on the left-hand side. Does well to get past Abby Sweetlove. And that's closed down very well by Nevo Donnell. Sent out of play. Very good cover in there from Nevo Donnell across. Needed to do that. Austria were definitely getting on the end of that. She made her way past Abby Sweetlove. Referee this afternoon is Deborah Annex from Switzerland. Um, her assistant is Letitia Nuara from Switzerland. And uh, Michelle O'Neill, not that one, from Ireland. <laughs> As far as I'm aware, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Ball back in play here. Sent out from the back by Sweet Love. There's maybe some jokes I could make there, but I won't. <laughs> Uh, both of us looking to stay in gainful employment <laughs> after today's match. So, Neville <laughs> Donald put under pressure there and does turn over possession. Ellinger gets a shot away, which just skips out to the left or to uh, Ellie Scott's right. Yeah, that was a brilliant chance there for Austria. Sophie Keenan. Very, very wide. She's looking to try and stretch the play, but because that pass from Neve O'Donnell is pretty short, it just allows just allows Ellinger to get in there. Ellinger possibly with uh, the first clear cut, cut shot of the game there. We'll be disappointed that she didn't make more of that. But uh, Northern Ireland survived their first test, really. Scott looks to be going long here for the first time this afternoon. Yeah, probably just got to try and relieve the pressure a little bit. Ball falls to McNeil. And uh, Keenan gets the better of Ellinger. It's another round throw. Conway. Back to Keenan. Feels like it's going to be one of those afternoons where Northern Ireland really are just going to have to dig in here. It might not be pretty, but they're going to have to plug away until they get their opportunity. Yeah, and you've got to minimise the mistakes because you see they're going to be ruthless. As soon as you make one slight mistake, well, Austria will pounce. They're just waiting on that. They're setting those traps, 
waiting for Northern Ireland to just mis misplace a pass and they'll be straight onto it. You can see them just cutting the pitch in half here. Northern Ireland cannot get out of this side. O'Donnell looks to spread it via Abby Sweetlove. She opts to go back to Scott. And still that press from Austria. Just Northern Ireland finding themselves with very little time on the ball. And whenever you're being pressed like that, your decision making can be hampered. Just trying to force those errors. Yeah, you know they wanted to get out onto the right side, but Austria doing a brilliant job to cut off Abby Sweetlove to not let her open up onto that right-hand side and release either McGuinness or McIntyre there. Here's a throw from D'Angelo. Finds Feinkhauser. into play and back into the possession of Austria. Darcy McNeil battling away there trying to turn away the tide at the minute. And uh, a little bit of desperation in that move from Sophie Keenan but does the job. Austria look to get back into play quickly. Teresa D'Angelo trying to find a marker. And you're turned away by McNeil. Dogged defending here from Northern Ireland to try and turn this away. They do get the free kick, which is taken quickly. And a dangerous play around the box here. I don't know that there was a need to play that so quickly. Um, whenever Austria were up in numbers pressing, they hadn't dropped off. And, you know, Northern Ireland probably just needed to relieve a little bit of pressure off themselves. They'd been under the cosh for sort of the last two, three minutes. Just set it up, relax take your time over the free kick just let your team get set and Austria aren't done yet as Feinkhauser the shot comes in and wide again it's really the second shot that Austria have had as we take another look yeah right. just opened up for her there right the mark yet again now really now in need of some breathing space on the pitch and just some time to gather their thoughts, think about their game plan and their shape and uh, try to impose their game on Austria. Really up that fast free kick, it's kind of what we're talking about whenever you're under the cosh like that and you're being pressed, it's, uh, it can affect your decision making. Um, and it's really now about overcoming that, settling down and, and beginning to take the game to Austria who have had a great start throughout this first 20 minutes. And there's a decent ball onto the right hand side, can Northern Ireland break here? Conway chases that down but is intercepted by Sarah Goodman. So just try and keep the ball up in this in, in Austria's defensive third for a little while. Welcome respite here as they prepare for the throw. Whipped in to the feet of Conway. Austria don't really have anybody high here, but look to break. Comfortably dealt with by Nivu Dono. Darcy Neal again there, latching on to any loose passes. It's been really good so far in this opening 20 minutes at just trying to close that midfield of Austria down. You can see there, Northern Ireland are clearly set up in like a 4-1, 4-1 formation. Darcy McNeil being the deep one and she's just trying to screen that back four and just trying to pick anything up and not allow them to drop into little pockets in front of the back four and turn and, and hurt Northern Ireland's back line. Here they come again, ball through the middle on the left, and there are two red shirts in the box. Closed down and dealt with by Arlene McGuinness. Did really well there, McGuinness, not to concede a corner.
Emma um, McGuinness, the younger sister of Northern Ireland senior internationals, Kirsty and Caitlin, uh, two players that you would know very well, Cara. And it never ceases to amaze me that all three siblings can be involved in, in international football <laughs> at that level. And, uh, certainly one to watch for the future. Northern Ireland's number two, Arlene McGuinness. Yeah, it's definitely got to be some sort of record if you get all three siblings <laughs> on just about the to senior say, pitch at one time. <laughs> can't have been a thing that's happened before. If Marshall Gillespie could, uh, <laughs> could fire us a tweet and let us know, please. Ball turned over fairly harmlessly. And uh, to the feet of Abby Sweetlove, Northern Ireland now arrive at the midfield and try and look for their way through. Here's Mia Moore. Just a quagmire in that midfield for Northern Ireland at the minute. Hard to get through there. That was the right choice of pass from Orlea McGuinness. You could see Austria had committed so many bodies over, right over to, towards the touchline that she was just able to try and pop it into sort of the centre. If, if, if they can just then get a foot on it and open up into the left-hand side, there's so much space. But it's just being able to execute that switch ball. But if they can recognise it and they keep trying it, I would say it's going to come off one of these times and they'll get an opportunity. The first step is seeing your game plan and seeing the opportunities that are there. Um, but it's much easier said than done when Austria continue to come forward in waves. They have been held at bay over the last five minutes or so much better than the opening 10-15. As uh, Amy Kerr goes to the ground, referee was play on. Referee's been a bit lenient at a couple of challenges. I think she's trying to let the game... Flow. Ball to Ellinger. And again, that's wide from Austria. Great ball in to the feet of Valentina Ellinger. And maybe for the second time this afternoon, she'll be unhappy she didn't make more of that. She really should be doing better there. Ellie Scott had committed so far over towards her left-hand side. The goal was gaping. So Northern Ireland getting away with one there. But uh, not quite over yet. Another shot comes in, and Scott, talk about getting away with one, just about manages to freeze that ball before it trickles over the line. Dangerous phase here for Northern Ireland. Cut off by Darcy McNeil. And Mia Moore sends it to her left. Ball from Keenan up to Rihanna Breen. Good football from Northern Ireland back to Rihanna Breen. She does have Conway to her right-hand side. Has another opportunity. And floats a ball in towards the back post. And it's just out of reach of Rachel McIntyre. But after a couple of uh, hairy moments there, that was a bit more like it from Northern Ireland. Yeah, good transition from Northern Ireland. They know they can't dwell on it because they know Austria will swarm them, so they've got to move the ball quickly and make decisions fast. And Darcy McLean was the one that won it and then got across to support Rihanna Breen as well. So she's had a brilliant opening 25 minutes here. Satra comes out. Ball over the halfway line from Teresa D'Angelo. Neil O'Donnell is there to meet it. Quick throw from D'Angelo. Yeah, I was just going to say, you see how quickly the urgency now they've had those chances that they've missed. And they know as they have the momentum, they've got to capitalise on it here, not let Northern Ireland get back into this game, just keep piling on the pressure. Another throw here from Austria's number 10, Laura Huchel. You might just be able to hear that small band of Austria supporters behind the Northern Ireland goal. Will and their team on here. They can sense an opportunity. Sorry, I said through. It's a free kick. My mistake. Curled in towards the near post, but wide of the target again. Probably were other options there for Austria other than the direct one. Yeah, I don't know whether she maybe spotted the goalkeeper in a in a position where she thought she could catch her out. 
And here's Ellie Scott again, who's had a busy afternoon so far. Let's go around and try to gain some territory here. Nice interplay between Orlea McGuinness and Abby Sweetlove. And is there an opportunity to break here? Again, just that Austrian midfield swarming as soon as the hosts make their way forward. Yeah, Greta Spin there. The Austrian midfielder just seems like she's everywhere at the minute. Really quite an influential player. Apart from that touch. <laughs> That's probably the only mistake she's made in the game so far. Coach there. <laughs> Keep building her up then she might make some more mistakes <laughs> yeah secret agent Hamilton <laughs> here's another throw from Northern Ireland over on the far touch line just in front of the dugouts so a little bit of time on the ball a little bit of free passing would grow the confidence let them start to see their opportunities to get forward here but again it's a tall order against an Austria team who are uh, growing in their desire to get a goal on the board here. After a few big chances missed. Ellinger screaming for that ball just outside the box. She found herself unmarked, uh, but Sophie Keenan picked it up. Brianna Breen touches forward, tries to get on the end of it, and does get on the end of it. No whistle. Breen tries to find Conway, but it's turned away. Again, Darcy McNeil. Say it's her again. Recognising the space out on that left-hand side to release Breen. She did well, Breen, to come away with the ball there. Danger here as Frankhauser makes her way into the box. And Eva Donald meets the threat. Amy Kerr taken down there and has stayed down. Thankfully, no ill effects. She's back to her feet. Noel Mitchell does have some options on his bench this afternoon. Uh, Kate Smith, the goalkeeper in her first competitive tournament. Number 9, Cassie Weir. 11, Sophie Gargan. 13, Olivia Canavan. 14, Sophie McGee. 15, Ellen Hampton. 16, Faye Lochran. 19, Maureen Quinn. And 20, Eva Miles. As uh, a ball intended for Rachel McIntyre. Again, just skips a bit too far for her. Just over the half hour mark here, and it's still nil nil at solitude. Yeah, they've managed to weather the storm just about with a bit of fortune. Yeah, really, if you look at what's happened on the pitch here over the last half hour, it's probably a result for Northern Ireland to still have those pair of goose eggs on the scoreboard. unseasonably sunny afternoon here at Solitude uh, up in the main stand here I was definitely expecting a much colder day <laughs> we're not complaining short throw for Northern Ireland to the feet of Amy Kerr Darcy McNeil battling there just to stay in possession and does manage it ball turned over again just shy of the halfway line Good work from Mia Murr to see that ball breaking loose and get across to it. She does have an option to her left and plays it well to Rihanna Breen. Cut off by Florentina Satra, the captain. Yeah, Mia Murr and Amy Karam, I'm sure, will be feeling a little bit frustrated not getting on the ball as much as they would have liked to. Darcy McNeil seeing most of the possession with her being that deeper midfielder, but... We know the qualities that Amy Kerr and Mimer have when they do get on it. 
but their chances to sh show that have been limited so far this afternoon. Amy Kerr, midfielder of Balaclare Comrades Ladies, and uh, Maya Mert is with Linfield. Work in tight space there from Austria to keep the ball. And a nice overlapping run from D'Angelo on the right hand side. Ryder with good feet to get that ball in. And equally, Northern Ireland very well. Do very well to get out of danger. There's a floating ball coming in, dealt with by Ellie Scott. Again, just the execution of the pass, trying to get out in transition, just wasn't quite good enough. And then the, goal, the ball's back with Northern Ireland's goalkeeper again. Jocelyn for possession in the midfield. Once again, Austria come out with it. Pressure for Neve O'Donnell. Does well with the header. Well, Medina says it has stayed down in the, Northern, in the Northern Ireland half, but uh, slowly gets back to your feet. Choppy first half here so far. As we head to the 35th minute, Noel Mitchell's side definitely have a battle on their hands this afternoon. Um, but maybe I'm the eternal optimist I've certainly seen flashes of opportunity uh, I think Northern Ireland know what they have to do it's just a case of gutting it out and executing yeah they've got to stay switched on they've got to continue to communicate because Austria's movement is so good particularly in the midfield it's got to keep through. talking to each other keep passing players on don't let anybody run off the back Greta Spin runs out of pitch there, trying desperately to get a ball in towards the goal. Particularly Greta Spin, as you said, she is the one who is pulling the strings for Austria at the minute for me. Austria's number eight as we get ready for the first corner of the afternoon. So a new defensive test for Northern Ireland here, and a game really that has been defined by their defendant. Laura Husserl to take this. So we're going to go again here. Cheryl standing over that ball on Austria's right. Good ball in towards the near post. Deflected away by Amy Kerr. And we're going to reset and go again. Ball played along the deck and chipped in towards goal. Almadina Sisic just chips that along the front of the six yard box and it seems somehow to have evaded everyone. Northern Ireland were kind of given a warning sign that they wanted to try and play that one but the referee pulled it back and then she opted to, to put it into the mix the first time but then they went for it again and Northern Ireland weren't quite switched on for it. They get away with the danger though and uh, short ball here they come again. Yamur is there in the midfield. Well done again by Sophie Keenan, who's had a good afternoon so far. Yamur looks to press. Rihanna Breen on the left hand side, cuts in, looks for a green shirt. Conway reads that very well. Here's a shot which skips just wide of the post. 
Goodness gracious, that was probably the best chance of the game so far for either side. Best chance in terms of probably the closest one, but not in terms of it wasn't a it wasn't a clear cut opportunity. From she had no nowhere. right to score from yeah. there, but brilliant work. Breen wanting to cut in on her right. It's the first time she's really had the opportunity to do that. She's always been forced out wide onto her left, which is her weaker side, and she links well with Gracie Conway, who comes towards it and drops it off for Amy Kerr and Amy just saying I've had enough of this, I'm gonna have a, a go here. <laughs> a shot across the bows of Austria there. And uh they will be feeling that they now need to make the absolute most of their chances. It's a really good back heel and it's hit on the outside of the foot. Uh, Yasmin Ryder was there. Just couldn't get that final touch on it. So for the first time this afternoon, Northern Ireland now know that they can get a ball onto the net. And, uh, an opportunity here for Austria. Brilliant challenge from O'Donnell again. Brave challenge from Neve O'Donnell. Uh, I was just about to say, Noel Mitchell will hope to see his team growing confidence here. I was talking offensively, but it was a terrific piece of defending from O'Donnell. Called into action again, dueling with Rederer. Inside of play, and it's another she corner. She just did enough there. Totally off balance, but managed to stick a toe in and send it out for a corner. Heading into the 40th minute here. And I think all things said, I'm not even going to say it ahead of a corner, actually. <laughs> <laughs> You've made that mistake. Yeah, we're, we're, not gonna, we're not going to do that. <laughs> Ball skips over everybody. Still in play. Foot race here. McDonald put under pressure. Plays a desperate ball to Kerr, who gets it away. It's brilliant vision from Mimi Kerr. She was under pressure there, knew she had to release the ball, but she'd already looked, scanned, knew where Rachel McIntyre was, and then she has the quality to execute it as well. Similarly, McIntyre's first touch there was fairly spectacular, but there's been a clash in the bodies there in the midfield, and uh, play is halted. Can't quite see the number on that jersey for Austria, um, but they'll receive a little bit of treatment. Again, probably a bit of welcomed respite for Northern Ireland. And uh, it is a welcome period of respite as uh, Noel Mitchell's side heads to the touchline to get some last minute orders ahead of half time and take on some water. McGuinness short to Sweet Love. He knocks the ball into the middle. Spin once again, dominating that area of the pitch. Nice one, too, and back to Fankhauser. Ball forward by Sisic, met by O'Donnell. O'Donnell has had a busy half here. And here's an opportunity to break Gracie Conway. Loses her footing, but stays in possession, stays up, and again. Seems like these opportunities for Northern Ireland just crop up almost out of nowhere. But again, they find themselves with the ball, bouncing around their 18-yard box. 
It really was unfortunate that she lost her footing at that point. Breen sends it forward, but it's met by that red wall of defenders. Amy Kerr again just showing her quality, shows what she can do when she does get on the ball. Like I said, her and Maya Moore just haven't been able to look up and get passes forward as much as they would have wanted to. But when they do get on it, you can see what they can do with it. There's ball to the left, or Lea McGuinness gets back to cut off Leone Tragel. Did well there, used their body really well. And they have the throw here, deep in their own territory. To try to find a way to work this out. Gain a few yards. Take two from Orlean McGuinness. Long throw towards Kerr. And uh, unfortunately for Northern Ireland, she's she actually really has turned over. She's really not getting much from this referee, Amy Kerr. She's gone down quite a few times. I think she's only actually been given the file maybe once. So I said quite early on, referee Deborah Annex, the Swiss official, fairly content to let it flow here this afternoon. Apart from there. <laughs> Second commentator's curse of the afternoon. Amadina Sisic standing over this free kick. So some late danger here for Northern Ireland as we creep towards half time. We're into the final minute of the half. That's a floating long ball in towards the six yard line. And just clipped over by Sarah Goodman. Tremendous ball in from Sisic as we take another look. Couldn't have asked for more there. Uh, but Goodman just could not keep that ball down and it skips up over much to the relief of Ellie Scott, her crossbar. Well, when I saw her standing over it, I just thought one final chance before half time. That just totally changes the complexion of the game if you don't keep it tight before half time. Not finished yet here as another ball comes in from Greta Spin and uh, Ellie Scott manages to get her hands on that ball as uh, Yasmin Ryder was bearing down sniffing an opportunity and we're into additional time here in the first half Could this be an opportunity for Northern Ireland? Here's McIntyre on the right-hand side. She's met by Goodman. Goodman with a strong challenge on McIntyre. Could we have some late drama in this first half as Northern Ireland have, I think, their first corner of the day? Hold an opportunity here for Will Mitchell's team. It's taken short. Ball squared across almost the goal line. And that will do it mm -hmm. for the first half. Referee, referee Deborah Annex blows her whistle. And uh, we go in at the break, nil-nil. Uh, Cara Hamilton, I mean, I think that nearly could have been 3-4 <laughs> <three, four laughs> maybe. Uh, and also a couple of, of uh, shock chances from Northern Ireland. Um, but... Uh, I was going to say before that corner earlier that uh, all things considered, taking that half as a whole, that uh, they would probably be content uh, Northern Ireland with 0-0 at halftime. Yeah, I think they would have taken that You know, before the game. They would know that Austria would have won at a fast start and, and they'll press them high um, and try and force the mistakes from them, which they have done. And But Northern Ireland, again, have shown flashes of what they can do on the break. Um, it's just whether they can be clinical enough and make the right decisions because you, they know that the opportunities are going to be few and far between that they're going to get and it's whether they can just take their opportunities when they do come um, but yeah like you said you'd take a nil-nil at half time against a really strong Austria team here pushing for, for top of the group and um, who've 
you know, won their won their first game, so they have all of the momentum behind them. With Northern Ireland coming off the back of a, a disappointing result the other night, mm-hmm. you know, it's it's tough to pick yourself up and, and go again, and it's physically demanding against a team who clearly have such great fitness levels um, and are working really hard. So it, it it's tough out there for them. And um, you know, we know that that Northern Ireland are are going to be up against it, um, coming in as the bottom seeds, and I, I believe Austria are possibly the top seeds in in the group as well. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, stern test, and and they'll be no, under no illusions that they're definitely up against it in in this game. But if they can just stay in it as long as possible, you just don't know. One of those opportunities, Austria could switch off, um, and th- they're leaving themselves a little bit light at the back because they are pushing forward in numbers. So they're kind of leaving that that two just at the back. And Northern Ireland have got in a couple of times with the pace that they have in McIntyre, Breen, and Conway. You know, there could just be a moment that they could just latch onto the one of those three balls and. It's only going to take one opportunity. Intriguing first half here at Solitude and uh, plenty of action still to come. Don't go anywhere. We'll be with you in just a few minutes. Um, for now, for, from here at Solitude at halftime, it is Austria nil, Northern Ireland nil. Hello again from Solitude for those of you that are sticking the kettle on and waiting for the second half of action here between Austria and Northern Ireland. We've got uh, some action from Finland and the Republic of Ireland, the other game in the group this afternoon. And we'll leave you with that now and see you in a few minutes time for the second half here.
Good afternoon and welcome back to Solitude. We are moments away from the second half of this Women's Under-17 Championship qualifier between Austria and Northern Ireland. Um, stubborn first half from Austria and from Northern Ireland. Went in at the break, nil-nil. Austria definitely had their chances um, but failed to capitalise and really against the run of play. Northern Ireland produced a couple of spectacular efforts um, but here we are getting ready for the second half. Joel Neal here alongside Northern Ireland international midfielder, midfielder Cara Hamilton. Um, Cara, we just saw there the uh, substitute board come up and uh, Neve O'Donnell has made way for Faye Lochran for the second half. Yeah, I think Faye typically plays in midfield. Um, that's where she plays for her club and where she played in the, the previous game against Finland whenever she came on. I think maybe just on the ball looking for somebody who's a slightly more composed. Um, Neve O'Donnell can't question her, her commitment in the tackle. She's some brilliant covering in the first half um, and really putting her body on the line. But I think Faye maybe just will sure them up a little bit in possession if they do want to play out from, from the back and continue to do that. And Northern Ireland are deep in the Austria territory in the opening seconds of the half here. Or Liam McGuinness is going to have a throw from the touchline closest to us here in the old main stand at Solitude. Tried to float it up over the top to find Mia Murr. Still in possession though, here's McIntyre. There's a number of red shirts between McIntyre and the goalmouth. I'm sure she looked up and just saw a <laughs> sea of red there. <laughs> I'm not sure anybody's making their way through that traffic, sadly. What do you think, uh, it's uh, one of those crystal ball questions, what do you think the message was from Noel Mitchell at the half? I think it's got to be continue to be switched on, particularly in this opening 10, 10, 15 minutes. You know that Austria are going to come out far and really frustrated that they haven't gone in in the lead. And they're just going to absolutely pepper you from the start. Um, and with what happened the other night against Finland, two early goals, mm -hmm. you can't afford for that to happen again. A dangerous start here for Northern Ireland. The ball is loose as uh, Scott scrambles to get back to her, back to her goal. It's uh, kicked into the side net and it's going to be a goal kick. And just as we said, uh, we mentioned it earlier, the, the two Finland goals came in the 50th and 52nd minute after a goal this first half. Um, so Northern Ireland will be on high alert here in the early minutes. They know that Austria are going to continue to pour forward and they know that they're going to have to take their opportunities. Murr surrounded by, again, three red shirts. Darcy McNeil is held up and Northern Ireland have a free kick in their own half. Out left by Sweet Love to Keenan. Here's Kerr. Kerr again, looking up for an option. Sends it back to Locker in the substitute. Must get composure from Locker in there. She had her back to... Or she was facing her own goal there and managed to get round and, and get Northern Ireland out, but unfortunately again couldn't hold on to possession. Faye Locker in the midfielder on the books at Lisburn Rangers. She certainly looks more assured on it. The first few passes were maybe a little bit ropey, but she was looking for the right options and she did look composed on it as well. So she just continues to do that, improves her execution. She will be an asset to Northern Ireland playing out from the back. Gracie Conway definitely warmed up for this second half after chasing between two defenders and the Austria goalkeeper, Laura Ritter. That's good work from Lochran to take the body away there. Sends that ball back out of the box. Here's Greta Spin. He has been extremely commanding out there so far this game. I think Abby knew that she'd made the foul there, but she was maybe just spanking on the referee, letting her away with that <laughs> one as well. Had a bit of a guilty look on her face whenever she turned around. 
you got to try. <laughs> and, uh, free kick for Austria here. It's quite a way out from that 18 yard line, but dangerous nevertheless. Yeah, we know our girl's not afraid to have a go from distance, and I think she's probably maybe eyeing this one up. Standing over alongside Sisic. It is a good shot. It's trickled in on the right hand side of the goal. And uh, as Carl Hamilton just said, Lara Husserl strikes that free kick from range and tucks it in to the left of Ellie Scott. Austria now lead by a goal to nil. You can see the relief from Austria to get that goal on the board after having thrown the kitchen sink forward throughout the first half. And uh, history repeats itself here as we hit the 50th minute of this game. And for all of Austria's really nice, lovely play and the chances they created from open play, it takes a set piece for them to, to get ahead. But that all I, pro I think they'll probably kind of take the shackles off Austria a little bit and they'll probably be re relieved now and really feel a freedom. So Northern Ireland really have to now keep it tight because it could get pretty dangerous for them if Austria and I have that freedom to go and play knowing that they have that goal cushion. First goal scored by Austria's number 10, Lara Huschel. And Ellie Scott's going to have the goal kick here. So now the makeup of a, a KG nil nil has been changed somewhat. Myanmar battling her way through that midfield. Conway has been putting the work in. Love to see a heat map so far, um, but has got not a great deal of service so far. Kerr plays it left. Finds Breen. Breen's going to have a go. And it loops just wide to the right. Certainly worth a go. We know what Rihanna Breen wants to do. She wants to get it on her right foot. And we know she's not short of confidence. And she will shoot from distance. Hit the crossbar from the other night from was maybe between 20 and 25 yards out. And that bravery you mentioned that Northern Ireland need to play with today. Uh, we talked about it in the first half. It does come to shooting opportunities as well. You know, if you can see something open up, there's nothing wrong with pulling the trigger and see what happens. Yep, certainly. And she'll take confidence from that. She'll know if she can get a few yards. Short throw in. Run down back in possession briefly. Captain Satra has stayed down just outside the Austria box. Uh, but... The team presses. Here's McGuinness. Austria trying to put the ball out there, but it didn't go, and Northern Ireland won't want the play to, to stop. Here's Mert. I think the ball was on to go forward there to bring Amy Kerr dwelt a little bit too long on it, and now they're caught in possession again. Our green shirts back to meet that, uh, but Austria now comfortably back in possession. Here's Hushel, the goal scorer. Good tackle from Mert. McIntyre, good feet herself. Tries to send that ball forward towards Conway. Going down and have the throw here. And uh, after. Eventually making her way back to her feet. The captain, Florentina Satra, has gone back down. Seems to be holding her lower back here. And is going to receive some treatment. As we said, we will be back with you from Seaview on Thursday afternoon at 2 o'clock as Northern Ireland face the Republic of Ireland. But, uh, Northern Ireland have quite a tall order here first before they can start thinking about that next fixture. Yeah, I think they've reacted well to the goal going in. They've continued to, to try and take the game to Austria and press forward. And 
you know, they're not just sitting back and allowing Austria to come on to them now. It is still very much an end to end game. Plenty of time left here for Northern Ireland to try and work their way back into this. And they do have the throw here. Whenever we resume inside Austria's half. Satra making her way to the touchline. Doesn't appear to be a great deal of activity from the bench, so hopefully she will continue. Meanwhile, here's Orlea McGuinness with the throw. Room short to Sweet Love. She looks to switch. It's cut off in the channel by Illinger. She is off to the races here. Looks for an opportunity in the box and finds it courtesy of Ryderer. Can Ryderer get a shot away? Northern Ireland get back to meet that. And uh, in the blink of an eye, McGuinness is back on that six yard line. The idea was right from Abby Sweet Love. She recognises where the space is, but I think it's ambitious to try and make that big switch. She probably could have gone out through through Darcy McNeil, she can be the pivot at the bottom of midfield and then release um, Northern Ireland on the left-hand side. But again, they are they are recognising what they need to do. It's just that execution. And again, Austria are, are setting traps and they're alive to anything mm -hmm. that's going to drop short. Yasmin Ryder, Austria's number nine, has made way for number 19, Tina Krasnig. First change for Austria this afternoon. Murr works her way out of the box. McGinnis works it out well, finds care. Ball drops out of play. Here's Sweet Love again. Faye Lochran, the halftime substitute. And this time Northern Ireland do switch it out left. Keenan knocks it forward and Breen makes her way into the middle. Not a lot of options there for Breen, but she somehow manages to get through that traffic. And is just cut off by Husserl. Yeah, Husserl went with her all the way. She wasn't going to give her an inch. And now Austria looks to break. Satra, the captain, has rejoined the action here. Seems to be okay. Frankhauser almost works her way through on goal. And then McGuinness is wise to that ball, rolling towards Ellie Scott. Has to sacrifice the corner though. Interesting to see Northern Ireland adopt a zonal mark and approach to corners. That usually divides opinion whether you go man for man or zonal. I know some people really aren't a fan, but it seems to have worked well so far. Austria sitting high, apart from Tragel on the goal line. It drops in onto Sarah Goodman, but she just can't get full contact with the header. Skips wide. That's much better now. Oh, care. Plays a pass forward to McIntyre, takes a bit of a deflection. McIntyre tries to work her way inside on Goodman. Goodman does well to roll that back to her goalkeeper, Ritter. It's kept in play here. Here's Krasnick, the substitute, getting her early touches. <coughs> yeah, but that passage all comes from the positivity of, of making that pass forward rather than going 
from side to side and allowing Austria to come on to them. Abby Sweetlove opens up straight away and gives it to, to Amy Kerr playing through the lines, not inviting Austria on to you from, by playing from centre-back to centre-back. Yes, you've got to move the opposition, but whenever it's on, you've got to look up and try and play forward. And that's really one of the first times that Amy Kerr's dropped in slightly deeper. She's been in more of an advanced position and has struggled to get onto it. And We know that she's probably the playmaker for Northern Ireland, so if she can get on it more, she can definitely hurt that Austrian defence. Yeah, that's great insight as always, but so you can see the, the rewards being reaped for just those moments of bravery and deciding to go forward whenever you could square. Austria now bearing down on the edge of the Northern Ireland box and a whistle halts play. Here's Keenan on the left wing. She has Breen down the line and finds Breen down the line as Rachel McIntyre makes her way in towards the back post. Massive opportunity for Northern Ireland and some really good play on that left wing. Uh, Rachel McIntyre just couldn't quite get there. She was met by Sarah Goodman and the keeper Ritter. Credit to Faye Lochran recognising early that Sophie Keenan was on. Just looped that ball over to her on the left hand side and Northern Ireland were out whenever Austrian weren't set. But Breen you see she just wants to get onto that right foot and if she can maybe just drive that across with her left. She's struggling as she's opened up her body to try and play it across with her right. Possibly for the third time maybe this afternoon. Northern Ireland can break quickly here. They can conjure opportunities out of nowhere almost. So Austria know that this is far from a concluded game here this afternoon. Says you find yourself unmarked in the box. McGuinness gets there. And a shot doesn't quite get the venom on it. And Ellie Scott collects. Just over the R mark here at Solitude. And it's still a wide open game for both sides. Austria currently with that slender 1 0 lead, courtesy of a set piece on the 50 minute mark from Lara Husserl. But Northern Ireland, he sends just growing in confidence here as the game continues. And McIntyre makes her way down the right hand side. Ball can't quite get into the box. No, she didn't really have too many other options. Maybe to continue her run slightly, try and maybe would have forced the corner. She was trying to, I think, catch a nick off the defender. She played the ball in, maybe slightly hopeful. Here comes Austria again. Ali Sweetlove left to deal with the danger as Almadina Sisic bears down. Here's Fankhauser. Via Muir looks to drive that ball away from the Northern Ireland penalty area. McIntyre seeing a lot of possession here in the second half so far. Tries to find Conway. Gracie Conway continues to just plug away, looking for her opportunities. And it can be a thankless task on an afternoon like this against a team like Austria. But certainly the work rate has not dropped from Northern Ireland's number 18, Conway. Now on her... Our game is very much she wants to run in behind, but sometimes you have to be able to adapt and sort of play that m little kind of ugly nor number nine role where you have to just hold the ball up, be a little bit more physical. But we know that she wants to just kind of ex exploit them on the run and use her pace in behind. But in those moments where Northern Ireland are in transition and they're very much in their own final third, if she can just hold the ball up and allow support to come to her. She will be very isolated if they, they try and just lump the ball forward to her. And she maybe can't quite get a foot on it because Austria are astute in their defence as well. Quick goal kick played short. Into a bit of danger. Faye Lochran manages to evade the press on Austria's shirts in that box. And here is Conway. Can she work her way into possession on the edge of the penalty area here? And uh, Greta Spin gets back to take care of that. Mm 
for spin again. Not forward by Hushiro. And out of play, it's another Ireland throw. Good high press for Northern Ireland. Just really testing Austria, seeing if they're able to play under pressure and maybe a little hairy moment from the goalkeeper there. And just as we're talking about her, Northern Ireland's number 18, Gracie Conway, has seen the end of her afternoon. She's replaced by number 9, Casey Weir. Casey Weir, somebody I'm sure you know, Cara, with Glentoran Women. Yeah, I just recently moved into the Glentoran Academy, actually, from, from Antrim Rovers. Um, really looking to, to kick on now and I'd say it won't be long before we start to see her feature towards the, the senior team trying to break through. Um, that's something that we want to do at, at Glen Torren as much as possible is, is give the youth the exposure um, as early as possible to senior football. You know, if they're ready and they have the quality and Casey's certainly shown that. Can she provide a spark here for Northern Ireland? Some fresh legs on the pitch here in the 65th minute. It's a good run in from Illinger. She's held up by Sophie Keenan. Leone Tregel in bags of space on the left-hand side if a ball can be floated towards her. And uh, Locker knocks that out of play for the corner. I said whenever Austria got that goal that that would probably relieve the pressure off them and they would start to play with a bit more freedom. But it's actually been Northern Ireland who I feel like have had the shackles taken off them and now they're starting to find themselves being on the front foot a whole lot more than what they were which they could have maybe done a little bit more in the first half and it's taken them to go a goal down to really start to, to open up and play here's a good ball in and Sarah Goodman number four finds the header on the six yard line Ellie Scott to her credit a massive dive across the face of goal and gets a hand to it but Austria have extended their lead and it's now two goals to nil yeah, I mean, there's two Northern Ireland players that go to win the header, but she just rises above them. And, you know, we could, I suppose, make a little bit of an excuse that she she does have the, the physical presence. She's much taller than any of the Northern Ireland team, but ultimately they were, maybe it's just a lack of desire or potentially whenever you're, you're marking zonally, you don't quite know who's meant to be taking which runner. And it is, for certainly for Northern Ireland, unfortunate, because as you were saying, 100% agree there was a, a tangible sense of confidence and a wee bit of momentum coming from Northern Ireland there just before that second goal uh, but Austria will probably be quite relieved to see that second on the board now it gives them a little bit of breathing room here with uh, just over 20 minutes to go and for the second time it's a set piece you know that's really really frustrating whenever you're able to hold the team out from open play and and you know they're not cutting you open directly I know they've had their chances at times but they've squandered them but it's it is really disappointing when, you know, at, at, the, at a basic level, you want to say, let's not con concede from, from set pieces because they're really cheap goals to give away. But that's uh, Goodman's second goal in two games. She uh, got the crucial goal against the Republic of Ireland as well. So Austria's number four, Sarah Goodman with that header just on the six-yard line. And uh, it has to be said, a great ball in from Austria as well. But here they come again. Illinger tries to work her way through that back line. I really think that was a foul on Abby Sweetlove <laughs> prior to that, and she certainly did as well. Austria with another corner now. And another good ball in, going for the same thing again. Drops just long from Gutman this time and uh, meets Abby Sweetlove on the six yard line. Yeah, you can see they just want to try and hit that same area that Gutman's going to be running into each time now. 
Northern Ireland know that and they know they can't give her any space whatsoever. Got to be touch tight. Amadina Sisic has been very effective from these corners and gets another opportunity on the reverse side. Ball dropped in. Misses Greta Spin and falls to the feet of Gutman. Brave from Sophie Keenan to come out and meet the danger there. But here's Spin again who has been one of the highlight players, standout players for Austria so far. And a wild shot from Sisic. Is met at the back post. Was an to skip the danger. Nearly looked like a wonder cross in the end. It definitely was a shot, but <laughs> <laughs> she would have claimed that she meant that. <laughs> yeah, as anyone would. Yeah, there was maybe a hint of offside there, but the lines, the lines woman didn't give it. Your spin again. Satra, the captain. Physical for Mia Murr. Brilliant tackle. Physical as well, yeah, from Amy Kerr. Superb tackle, and Northern Ireland now look to get this ball into the box, try to do something here in the last 20 minutes of this game. Really now with uh, no option but to go for it. Tremendous challenge from Northern Ireland's number 10, Amy Kerr. Uh, the captain during that last passage of play. Ball forward. And Northern Ireland are going to go home here and reset. Ellie Scott has sweet love to her right hand side. And Liam McGuinness comes forward for it. And uh, Hannah Fankhauser unlucky there not to end up with possession. Neil sends it left to Keenan. Here's Kerr. Starting to move the ball a whole lot quicker from one side to the other now. Northern Ireland are recognising where the space is. And substitute coming up for it appears to be Austria. Number 14, Teresa D'Angelo will be replaced by number 6, Lena Nindel. And number 18, Valentina Illinger will be replaced by number 2, Maya Kekais. So Austria coach Patrick Heibar bringing the changes here with just under 20 minutes to go. Some fresh legs on for Austria. Looking to hold this lead and see it away. Ball in towards the edge of the box. Turned away by Kekais. It's her first touch of the game. Your sweet love. McIntyre. Ball finds McGuinness. She's so strong in the middle of the park, this Austria side. Northern Ireland find it hard to hold possession. And a decent ball through. Intended for Sisic. Is cut off by Rihanna Breen. Like 
McIntyre again. Tries to cut inside and just again finding herself overwhelmed. You can see her frustration. She's just asking her, her midfield, like, you're not, you're not giving me any options. Whenever she can't go down the line, she needs to be able to link with someone in the middle, but she doesn't seem to have anything on. Time now beginning to run out for Northern Ireland who find themselves 2-0 down here against Austria. But still, their opponents are given no quarter this afternoon. Still looking to smother that ball, particularly in the middle of the park. And uh, leave you with very little time to make decisions. It's an industrial challenge from Amy Kerr. And the referee blows that up. Greta Spin, who has been superb this afternoon, it has to be said, is receiving a bit of treatment for that. And uh, referee Deborah Annex goes to her pocket for the first time this afternoon and shows the yellow to Kerr. Yeah, Amy Kerr seems... A little bit shocked to be receiving a yellow, but from where we were stood, it, it looked like a pretty dangerous challenge. I don't know if she got any of the ball there. And uh, some views being exchanged between the two technical areas on the far side. Austria coach Patrick Heidbauer, obviously not best pleased that uh, one of his star players, Greta Spin, is down after that challenge. Couldn't quite hear what was being said, but I don't think they'll be going for a pint after the match today. <laughs> and Spin is back to her feet. And uh, will gingerly make her way. To the touchline. And she will continue here. Austria now in possession, knocking that ball around midfield well, and uh, equally as well, Orlea McGuinness intercepts, and uh, does really well to get past Maya Kekais, the substitute, gets the ball into the middle, here's Mia Mert, knock left to Kerr, McIntyre, all the way out to Keenan, Sisic on the right-hand side just runs out of pitch there. Rolls out of play and it's a Northern Ireland throw. That was really the first time we've got to see Orlea McGuinness get forward in this game and show what she can do offensively. She's been kind of pinned back in this game, but yeah, she did really well there just to turn the afterburners on and breeze past the, <coughs> the Austrian midfielder. And that will be the last action of the game for Orlea McGuinness. She's going to be replaced by number 14, Sophie McGee. McGuinness, uh, any time I've seen her uh, in real life here playing football, it's just a, a high energy game, covers a lot of ground and uh, has been up against it this afternoon but put in a good shift. McIntyre on the right hand side, down the line to Casey Weir. McGee, fresh on here, takes the throw to McIntyre. So for McGee, plays her football with Grasshopper Zurich. And uh, again, if my notes are correct, this would be her first 
competitive competition with Northern Ireland. Ball skipped across the front of goal. And agonizingly, Rihanna Breen was there, just couldn't quite get anything on it. As we head into the last 10 minutes of this afternoon's game, Northern Ireland desperately need a goal now or as soon as possible if they're to have a chance of getting anything from this. But uh, easier said than done as Austria again moved the ball well. Here's Goodman. Krasnik finds a shirt in the middle. Kick ice all the way back to her goalkeeper, Ritter. Satra. Looks to be more changes coming here for Austria. I think it could be a double sub. Yeah, Austria just obviously starting to think about Thursday's game against Finland. Captain Florentina Satra hands the captain's armband over to Ritter, her goalkeeper. He's going to be replaced by number 12, Sofia Hoke. And Almedina Sisic will be replaced by number 11, Helena Milanovic. McGee to McIntyre. Great feet, Rachel McIntyre. Can't quite get the end product though. How to play again? Strong again from McIntyre. I really now need to start pushing up. Being brave, trying to get some shots on goal. Try for handball, and they're going to get the free kick. Yeah, sometimes Rachel McIntyre doesn't have to go forward every time. She could have just set that back maybe to Abby, Mc or Abby Sweetlove, and then we can get out the other side, Northern Ireland. But she's always so determined to try and find that forward pass or make that forward run. Sometimes it's okay to just go backwards. And there's a speculative shot from Amy Kerr from distance. Not trouble, Lara Ritter. Here's Goodman. The only trigger takes us through. Down the line, met by Sophie McGee. He can't quite get a foot on Krasnick, the substitute. It's a good run from Krasnick. Makes her way into the box, gets a shot away, and scores a spectacular goal for Austria's third. And in the 83rd minute, Northern Ireland find themselves in a hole here. Wow. That was a spectacular run forward from Austria's number 19, Tina Krasnick. Finds her way into the 18 yard box and chips that over Ellie Scott. And Austria now lead 3 0. Yeah, sometimes you just have to hold your hands up to a bit of individual brilliance and that's that's what that was from the substitute Krasnick. Just went by three of them there, brilliant feet and an even better finish. Time now is certainly not on Northern Ireland's side as they find themselves behind by three.
Great work and a great tackle from Faye Lockren. Spin. Nice one, two. And the ball in towards the near post. Gathered up by Scott. McGee. And Rachel McIntyre. So a busy afternoon here. He's going to be replaced by Northern Ireland's number 11, Sophie Gargan. Yeah, she'll go out onto the left-hand side and then Green will just shift across here to the right. Another product of Linfield Ladies, Sophie Gargan, the striker. Work rates there from Gargan. She gets her first taste of the football. It's certainly not over until it's over, uh, Cara, but Northern Ireland now must begin to look forward to a massive clash with the Republic of Ireland on Thursday. Um, how does this change the, you know, the complexion of their, of their campaign so far as, as it looks like they're probably going to um, finish here with their second loss? Yeah, I don't know that it, it changes an awful lot in, in terms of the, the mindset and the mentality. I mean, mm -hmm. you want to be competitive in every single game that you go into and um, put on a performance, but you've always got to, got to keep an eye on the big picture. And um, that's what Noah Mitchell, I think, will continue to remind them of, is that for a lot of these girls, it is their, their first competitive fixtures at, at, this, yeah. at this level. And um, it is all about development at the end of the day. And there's certainly been signs in, in both the Finland game and in this one that they're trying to do the right things and they're developing a, a style of play um, and starting to gel with each other. And it's always difficult too to get the balance right between you know, giving people game time and also trying to put out a, a team who you believe can win the match. And you know, sometimes it's not always going to be the, the same the same players that, that start every game because you, you want to give girls exposure to, to this level and you know, if you are going to go into League B come um, come the springtime, then all of those girls you'll you'll want to you want to have given them that the exposure at this level. Yeah, that is a fairly spectacular insight, and you're right. You know, it is. It's it's uh, it's development at the end of the day for these players who all have bright futures ahead of them. And the ball just skips over the top of goal. Oh, I'm looking for a late one here as we approach the 88th minute. We do have a late corner here. There would be no better way to head into Thursday's game against the Republic of Ireland than with a goal on the board here before the end of this one. Certainly cannot fault the effort of Northern Ireland this afternoon. They have been a workhorse against a very, very good Austria side. Um, and they are, it has to be said, in a fairly tricky group as well alongside Finland and the Republic. Certainly, they've been, been fully committed. They've put themselves about. They've been strong in the tackle, um, and haven't haven't pulled out of anything. And I, you know, you cannot fault the work rate. That's the one you know basic thing that Noah Mitchell will ask of these players is to to give a hundred percent effort, and they certainly have done that. And like we said, it just comes down to more time. Just keep you know drilling um, into these players what he wants them to do on the ball because off the ball. You know, you can see that they'll 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 work hard right to the very end, and they'll continue to to get better. 
and Northern Ireland have earned themselves a free kick. Came from a great tackle from Faye Lochran. And uh, Sophie Keenan a little worse for wear after that contact. Have to respect Amy Kerr trying to get an extra seven or eight yards there for that <laughs> one. Uh, but unfortunately, Deborah Annex, the referee, is wise to it. Here's McGee. Breen finds Triggle and it's out of play for a Northern Ireland throw to be taken quickly by McGee. And unfortunately, just skips out. Did they get the corner from that? I Got think they corner, did. Yeah, came the head. Behind the, uh, the big pillar in front of us here <laughs> in the main stand. Big opportunity for Northern Ireland here to get the reward of a goal for their efforts this afternoon as we enter stoppage time. Short corner and played into the box. Back post. And uh, Abby Sweetlove cannot quite get the shot away. It's going to be another corner. I'm sure Abby Sweetlove's eyes lit up there whenever she saw that <laughs> ball fall into her. The defender did well to get out to her. Nice and quick. So one more chance here for Noah Mitchell's side. Another short corner. And it's played deep to Sophie Keenan. Tries to find Moore in the box. Breen floats a ball over to the right-hand side to McGee. She's met and dealt with by Tregel and Austria are back in possession here. Grouse Ben hooks that ball forward. Here's Frank Kaiser. Tries to square it. Very well done by Faye Lochran to intercept. Did well to save the corner there as well. Darcy McLean following up. Yep, Austria have to settle for the throw. Spin again. It's going to have a go from distance. And that is Great a superb save. save from Northern Ireland's number one, Ellie Scott. Stretching to get a fingertip on that ball just to guide it over the crossbar. Save of the match today, certainly. And Austria have maybe one of the last plays of this game with another corner. Ball whipped in towards the near post and bounces across the face of goal and out of play. I think four would certainly be harsh on Northern Ireland. Austria, no doubt, the better team in this game, but yeah, it's definitely not a, a 4 0 game, I don't think, no, based on how they played in the second half. I think you're right, Northern Ireland, unfortunate not to get a goal here this afternoon or to, to finish with a much closer game. They certainly had a couple, of, especially in the first half, of uh, snap opportunities out of the blue almost. And a lovely phase of play down the left early in the second half here which almost put a goal on the board but as the referee blows the final whistle here at Solitude this afternoon it has ended Austria 3 and Northern Ireland 0 uh, there's no time to sit around feeling sorry for yourself at the moment as Northern Ireland must now pick themselves up and go again massive clash on Thursday uh, from Seaview at 2 o'clock against the Republic of Ireland we'll bring it to you live and if you can please get out and support the, the team uh, it's Neil here alongside Cara Hamilton Cara uh, you, we said it there in the last few minutes. I mean, ultimately, it's been a, a an, an afternoon of extremely hard work from Northern Ireland. Some dogged defend and a couple of, of kind of chances where you could see possibly a way into this game. But ultimately, uh, the the Austria side this afternoon was just too strong, and, and they're probably worthy of their win here. Yeah, look, no doubt the the better team was Austria on the day. 
But I think, like we alluded to earlier, it's the manner of the goals that are the most disappointing thing for Northern Ireland. You know, for all Australia's good play, they didn't put away those chances in the first half. I think the first half they actually created more clear-cut chances, but they went in at nil-nil. And, you know, at, at that point, you think there is always a chance that Northern Ireland could get back into the game. And unfortunately, like we said earlier too, it, was, it really took that goal for Northern Ireland to get going and, and start to be more confident on the ball and be more on the front foot. But... I think they'll take confidence from the fact that whenever they went one down, they didn't just sit back and, and allow Austria to dominate. They really continued to take the game to them. And there's risk in that as well, that you, you give away chances, you give away space as you're going to continue to push a quality side like Austria will often exploit the space that you leave. Um, and they did that very well, albeit that it was two set pieces. But, you know, they had to, to create those, those opportunities and get that territory in possession to then work those chances. And, yeah, to be fair to Austria, I think they were... You know, clinical whenever, whenever it came to it in the second half, and you know they can just put their foot on the gas and can just uh, can just change it whenever, whenever those chances come. Yeah, look, uh, Cara, always appreciate your your expertise and your insight here. Uh, nobody better to talk about the Northern Ireland women's setup. Um, we will do this again on Thursday afternoon as Northern Ireland face the Republic of Ireland. Um, but as we leave you with some pictures from the second half, some highlights. Um, of, of those goals it has ended here at Solitude this afternoon Austria 3 Northern Ireland 0